If you got your Bibles, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and put a marker right there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And then go to our key verse in John chapter 3. Hallelujah. We're still on our series entitled, The God Kind of Life. God wants us to have His kind of life down here. Not the devil's kind of life. Now, a lot of people on this planet are living the devil's kind of life. A lot of them are clueless on who it is coming from. They just think God's doing it to them. They don't know the nature of God. God's good all the time. John 10.10, Jesus said, The thieves come to steal, kill, destroy. I've come to give you life. Give it more abundantly. I just told you, the devil's all bad. God's all good. That one verse, John 10.10, is the balanced wheel of the whole Bible. Start there, get a revelation of that. And when you read the whole book, you'll see God's good on every page. Guarantee it. John chapter 3, verse 16, says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Well, just that right there. He's loving all the ungodly sinners. Don't tell me He's not good. That whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wonderful verse. Many folks have got saved by this verse. And to this day, they are looking forward to starting their everlasting life. Thank you for that amen, Sally. When they get to heaven from this verse. Now, you've been with us in this series. You see that that he's not majoring on heaven, is he? Well, why are they majoring on heaven? Because they've been religiously brainwashed. That's all the preacher preaches. It's real easy as a minister to preach about the past and preach about the future. Yep. But if I preach about now, we placed ourselves in a responsible position right then. And preachers don't want that. That's why if religion gets hold of any present truth, they will always put it off to the future. Always. And most churches do that. That's why you guys come out to this church. You're not going to hear religion. If religion is, starts being preached here, I will be the first not to show up. <laughs> I won't be here. <laughs> this verse was not about everlasting life later. It's always been about everlasting life now. Everlasting life is eternal life, an ending life. It's God's life. It's the God kind of life. And it starts now. Heaven starts now on earth. Matthew 6.10. He said, declare my kingdom come. This is Jesus. My will be done. When you get to heaven, you'll get it. He didn't say that, did he? He said on earth. I didn't plug on earth in there. He did. (laughs) As it is in heaven. But see, just if you go after that, you're going to step right into a lot of faith responsibility and you're going to step into a mess of religious persecution. Tons of it. How do you know? (laughs) I've been in it many a times. It's not going to change what God says, and it's not going to change my belief in what God says. You can give me 20 verses coming against God's good, and I still say you're missing it. You're reading it wrong. Well, that's what happened in the jail that night. That's why that guy started yelling at Kelly and I, because I was preaching on the series called The Goodness of God, and he did not appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> I mean, pick something else besides 
having a soapbox to let everybody know God's not good. Come on. That's just terrible. No, He is good all the time. God sent His Son to give us eternal life. Now, in doing that, He sent His Son to get Himself back into us so we could have God's life now and later. Not just later. It's not just later. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. We shouldn't be perishing in any way, shape, fashion, or form down here right now. What's perishing? Sickness, disease, lack, poverty, depression, confusion, stress. Well, no, 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 don't go that way. Oh, no, I am going that way. Everybody has a stressful job. Can I get a witness? Life is stressful. Can I get a witness? Okay, that's daily. Now, it's up to you as a son and daughter of God not to let it in you. Totally up to you. I don't let it in me. We don't have to perish. But I'm perishing here, 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 here. Well, you need to get, get in the Word and get more understanding and learn how to apply this stuff so you don't perish that much. You saying it's my fault all day long? We're just going to jump right on in, Sally. Is that okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear this. Praise God. We're hungry. If you come out to this church and hear this type of message, you're hungry for the Word. You can get lost at any church's back pew in the town if you want to and not be affected by nothing if you want to. Will you get in here? This size church? I don't care even the back row folks are on the front row this close. Aren't we? (laughs) Oh, man. That's it, right there. That's it. Yeah, there. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my. God wanted to be in us, to live in us, to move in us. Well, Jesus even said in John 17, 28, uh, for in Him we live, we move, we have our being. That's the everlasting life now. To live, to move, and have our being, our existence on this planet in Him, in His life. Everlasting life now. Heaven on earth now. That's why He got in us, and when He did, the spirit of death left. The spirit of life came in, and you were made a new creation at that time. You're one with Jesus. That's why you're a new creation. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. He that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You're one with Him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, there's a qualifier, are you in Christ? Yes. Then you're a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, In other words, look, see, be aware of, focus on it. All things are become new. It doesn't look like it. You're missing it. The real you is the spirit man. When you hear messages like this, you're always looking at this body man. Well, I don't feel like I'm new. Uh, I'm still in pain. You've got to get focused on the real you inside this one with Jesus. Get connected to the healer. And then the healing starts flowing to the physical body. But if you keep your focus always on the body, uh, nothing's going to be fixed. It won't be fixed. You've got to refocus, praise God. You've got to put your mind on Him. We're new creations. As believers, you got in Christ. Christ got in you. And when that happened... He made you a new creation full of His life. Amen. You can't get any more life of God than you got now. Yeah. 
See, when we die, our spirit doesn't change. Our spirit is already complete and perfected for heaven now. Nothing's going to change with your spirit. You're just going to lose this vehicle. That's all you, That's all going to happen. I'll be glad when I get there. I'll be uh, perfect and I'll be complete just like Jesus. You are now. Amen. You're just so blinded by looking at this physical body all the time that you never see any of His perfection, any of His goodness uh, come out from your spirit into your body. Well, that's what this message is about. Let's get it in, let's get it in our physical body. Amen. Praise God. First John 5.11 says, and this is the testimony, that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Well, if the Son's in you, you got it. Amen. It's all through the book on how we already have eternal life now. you got to take your hat off to the devil. He is really good at blinding most of the Christians on the planet. Well, they can't wait to die and get to heaven and start that eternal life. <laughs> Come on. Let's start it now. You don't have to die to experience heaven. Just close your eyes and start praising Him. He says He'll inhabit the praises of His people and now all of a sudden you're experiencing heaven. We don't have to die to go there. Just refocus and go there. Before you believed in Him, you were spiritually dead. That wasn't a good place to be. You wasn't going to heaven now or later at that moment. <laughs> but then God's life came in you and the old dead you passed away. Now I got to kick religion since I brought that up that way. You don't have the new you and the old you in you. If you read the average commentary for the Bible, they all agree on that blindness. Well, you know, I'm doing, I was doing really good. And then all of a sudden, that, that old me raised up, stuck his ugly head up, and then I did the wrong thing. That's the problem. You still think he's in you. Yeah. He's not in you. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah. Graveyard dead. The average Christian holsters a shovel. They always exhuming that boy every chance they get. Yeah. Constantly. Put the shovel down. <laughs> Is this hitting home or something over here? In the... A little bit. <laughs> I tell you what, when you walk in here with a shovel right here, we got a problem. <laughs> the old you is graveyard dead. Gone. You're spiritually alive now. You have to realize your position in Christ. You're a new creation now. And recognizing that position, that means at this moment, you're in the God kind of life. The everlasting life that you'll experience in heaven but now. Glory be to God. Back up a couple of books to Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, praise God. Verse 4, it says, Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The glory of the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Glory is God's manifested presence. Glory is the manifested presence of God's life. When you're sensing His glory, you're feeling Him. God's not against feelings. He just wants you to get there in faith first. And that's not deep. Because He wants... If He didn't want us to have feelings, why did He give them to us? <laughs> he wants us to have them. He wants you to experience His glory. I expect glory to fall on everybody every Sunday morning. Experience the presence in here. 
Experience the atmosphere change as soon as you walk in. Why do you say that about me? Because you bring God with you. Amen? Amen? Glory be to God. It was God's life that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. A lot of power in that life, isn't it? When death is anywhere near and life shows up, guess who wins? Life. Mm -hmm. God's life is His light. So when light is anywhere near darkness, guess who leaves? The darkness. Yeah, all, all day long. We can turn off the lights in here and close all the curtains that we had more and then turn back on the light and you will not see any pockets of darkness saying, I'm not leaving. <laughs> it won't happen because light is always stronger than darkness Amen. well that's in you shouldn't be walking in, in any kind of darkness in other words mentally to physically to socially to financially you shouldn't be walking in any darkness because you got the light in you. Jesus said, I, I am the light of the world, John 8, 12. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Shall not walk in darkness. Well, I'm walking in it. Well, identify with Christ. It really is that easy. Turn on the light, would you? Yeah. You, well, yeah, when you identify, you just turned on the light. Amen. Amen. Notice in this verse, verse 4 again, it says... Just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. The word just as means in the very same way to the very same degree. Amen. Just as Christ was raised from the dead into the newness of life, this word says, we should be walking in it to the same degree, in the same way. We should be walking in resurrection life right now. Amen. I think it's John eleven twenty five that Jesus looked at Mary or Martha and said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Well, that's Jesus. Back the message up a little bit. Identify. Identify. We're so used to identifying with the old me instead of the new me. We're so used to identifying with the old man instead of the new man. We're so used to identifying with the old sinner man instead of the new saint man. You're a saint right now. Well, how can I be? Because Jesus is in you and He makes you a saint. Amen. And if you mess up, you're a saint that's receiving forgiveness again. This is a spiritual position. Amen. Sainthood and sinnerhood <laughs> doesn't flip and flop back according to your actions. Yeah. It's according to where your heart is. It is good. <laughs> if you come here for an English course, you're in the wrong church. <laughs> I know two languages. I know English and I know tongues, and I know tongues a whole lot better. A whole lot better. <laughs> a whole lot better. <laughs> oh, man. But then we'd have to have an interpretation, and that gets back over in English again. <laughs> verse, verse 5 it says, For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of His resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Him. Not will be. He was. The old Jew that's so easy to identify with is dead. That's why it don't work. You won't be successful hanging out with a dead man. It won't work. Or dead friends. Well, you know, I like to hang out at the bar with my buddies. I don't drink. Oh, they're affecting you because they're dead. And you wonder where the life is. You keep letting go of the life because you want to hang out with the dead. <laughs> Quit hanging out with the dead. 
knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. The old sinner man made us slaves to sin and its effects. Realize when I say sin and its effects, that means sin and its penalties. Sin carries a penalty. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 The wages of sin is sickness, disease, lack, poverty, depression, discouragement. That's the wages. So when when you hear me talk about sin, I'm always connecting it to the penalties of it. Amen? Amen? When we were walking in that old sinner man, we couldn't help but sin. And we couldn't help but be cursed. Why? Because we're hanging out with the dead. He can't help you. You can't help a sin. And you know how many times, it, whatever the a sin was in your life or the addiction was in your life, you tried your best to quit something? As a sinner or even as a Christian that connected to the sinner's willpower, you tried your best to quit a, an addiction and it got worse, did it not? And some people, oh man, they proud, egotistical. Yeah, I quit cigarettes. And picked one up in two years. Well, praise God for that. It looked like he gained about 65 pounds. Yeah, come on. All they did is substitute it. Yeah. And then we get to ones that are really proud and egotistical. Quit cigarettes. Didn't pick up nothing else. You picked up the worst habit possible. Pride. Pride. <laughs> That's why this whole world got this way, because of pride. Quit trying to justify your guilty position. Quit identifying with that dude. People try their best to quit addictions in themselves. That's sinning to stop sinning. Explain that to me. That could get confusing real easy. So you're going to sin to quit sinning. You're going to drink to quit drinking. Really? Enough said. Wow. I feel like I'm in jail right now. That's how we used to preach all the time in there. (laughs) Praise God. We couldn't help but sin. We couldn't help but be cursed. But when we believed in Jesus... He made us new creations in Him. Thus delivering us from the old sinner man. Getting rid of the sin and its effects. Look at uh, verse 6 again. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be done away with. The Greek for done away with, that the body of sin might be rendered inoperative. If you identify with Christ, that sinner and its sin and penalties is rendered inoperative in your life. In other words, it won't show up in your life if you identify with Christ. Boy, that's good. When When we believed in Jesus, the old sinner man was done away with. He was rendered inoperative. He was shut down in our life. And not only was sin shut down, but Jesus shut down the penalties. That's some cheap grace right there. When you think, well, God says, I forgive you of sin, but you know you've got to pay the penalty? Uh, Well, uh, you can keep your grace then. (laughs) Are you with me on that? Jesus' blood is not cheap. He took care of the sin and the penalties. But religious mindset has twisted us up thinking, oh, we got to pay for this. Well, it's my fault. No, repent for listening to the devil and get back over in Christ and not pay for nothing. Uh, Hang on. Uh, Didn't God send somebody that hung on a cross? Okay. Uh, He paid for it. Back to being spiritually 
proud. Well, you know, I did it. I got to pay for it. Shut up. <laughs> Jesus hung on the cross. You don't have to. Are y'all getting this? Amen. Just go ahead and take the grace. It ain't cheap a bit. It'll cover all your screw ups. Guaranteed. I don't care how bad it gets or how many more times you do it this week. It's covered. You can't reach the end of grace. You can't reach the you reach the end of love. Well, I've quit this habit. I've counted it two hundred ninety three times. Okay. Well, the two hundred ninety fourth time, do it in Jesus, and you won't find the two hundred ninety fifth time. Hallelujah. It just won't happen. Thank you, Jesus. But I feel so condemned. You, don't talk to me and share your heart. I'll just tell you where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> Romans 8 1 says, There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ. So, pop quiz. <laughs> where are you at? You ain't in Christ. Yeah. <laughs> okay, calm down, Chris. This is not jail. Relax. <laughs> I don't know. The jail spirit got on me for some reason. <laughs> We're free from this dude. He's gone. He's rendered inoperative. He's done away with. He's shut down. Sin's shut down. The curse is shut down. Jesus, by hanging on the cross, put to death the curse. Galatians 3.13 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Redeem means He purchased us. He bought us back. The curse cannot be in your body. Spirit, soul, or body. It can't be there. And don't go sideways. Well, well there's a, you know, uh, uh, I'm dealing with some generational curses. What happened to Jesus' blood? The devil gets in your head and your head allows him a doorway to put stuff on you. He redeemed you from all curses. Jesus took the curse, every curse, so you don't have to take any of them. Period. Oh, what if I mess up? Don't make room to pay for it. You're back to... Just saying, Jesus, you know your sacrifice wasn't uh, enough. That's Galatians 2.21. Read that later. He redeemed us from the curse of the law. If He took the curse, I don't have to take the curse. Surely as bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. Or surely as bore our disease and carried our pain, the Hebrew says. So if, if He took my, my disease, I don't have to take it. If He bore my pain, I don't have to bear it. I don't care how bad I mess up. I got grace. Whew. I'm a saint. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I will not make void the grace of God. That's Galatians 2.21. But there's more to it in it. I'm not going to void it out by, by saying I have to pay for it. This is what religion teaches. Yep. Oh, you need to get on your knees, son, and see if God will forgive you. <laughs> Spend some time down there. You've got to get. You've got to eat some carpet, boy. What you've done? <laughs> Say, get thee behind me, devil! I got grace. Amen. Why are you? Why are you yelling? I don't know. Don't ask me. <laughs> It's are good. <laughs> oh, man. In His death, He took the curse so we don't have to take the curse. Now, we should live curse-free. We should. He's saying you should. You know what that's doing? He's pointing the finger at you. Like, why aren't you? Isn't it? You should. 
So why aren't you? You need to identify. Verse 7, For he who has died has been freed from sin. Have you died? Most Christians haven't. All you got to do is say something sideways to them. You'll find out they ain't dead. Not dead a bit. (laughs) That's another whole message right there, ain't it? (laughs) How dead are you? Let me me check. (laughs) For he who has died has been freed from sin. That sounds like past tense, doesn't it? (laughs) Sin and its effects go hand in hand. Therefore, whoever has died is freed from sin and its penalties. We're already free from the curse. Why is that? Because we're dead. You'll never go to a cemetery and find a dead person trying to get free from sickness or disease. You'll never walk into a cemetery and find a dead person struggling with an addiction. You'll never find a dead person Struggling with fear, mental problems. Why is that, Brother Chris? They're dead. Thank you, Pastor. Bring down. I know I'm getting deep, but stay with me, okay? <laughs> They're dead. They're just graveyard dead. <laughs> Why is that? Because the old sinner man, now listen. Here's a big revelation of this message. Why are they struggling with any of it? Because the old sinner man that connected them to the sin and its penalties is gone. Why? Because when that person died, saint or sinner, there's no connection to the sin or its penalties no more. You're only connected when you're alive in this body. Are y'all getting that? We're going somewhere. Because the old sinner man that connected them to sin and its penalties is gone. And since he's dead and gone, the curse has no source to feed off of any longer. That's why you, you go to the cemetery, you will not find nobody struggling from an addiction. Because they're dead. There's no temptation to pick up the bottle or the joint. They're dead. (laughs) Well, that just described us as believers. Our old sinner man is dead. Stay with me. Which means the curse can't exist in us anymore. Because what fed The curse, the source that fed the curse that the non-Christian has no chance to come against is dead in us. The sinner man's in them. That's why they can't quit sinning. That's why they, they can't quit the addictions. That's why they're always sick and disease and life is getting worse and worse and worse. And that's why they come up with the ungodly statements. It just is what it is. Christians and non-Christians alike say that. You ever have a Christian say that? They've lost their relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a good word right there. You got quiet, so it must be a real good word. Praise God. We're born again. We're new creations. The old sinner man's gone. There's no connection in you to feed the curse. The curse is gone. 
Sickness and disease is gone. It's dead to you because you're dead to it. Back to the cemetery. You're dead. (laughs) There's nothing in you to feed it any longer. We're dead to the old sinner man and alive unto God. Romans 6, 8 now. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with Him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Him. Well, you don't have to die anymore. So death doesn't have dominion over you. Sin and its penalties don't have dominion over you. Y'all stay with me. For the death that He died, He died to sin once for all. Will you identify with Him? It's a done deal. Amen. That dude's graveyard dead. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But the life that He lives, that's present tense, talking about Jesus and Jesus in you. The life that He lives, He lives unto God. If we believe that we died with Christ, we should believe that we live with Him as well. The life that He lives, once again, is present tense. Right now, Jesus is living in resurrected life. Amen? He's walking in the newness of life that verse 4 told us that we should be walking in right now. Amen? Amen? Amen. What a strong right there. 1 John 4, 17 says, As Jesus is, so are we in this world. This isn't even talking about how Jesus lived on this planet. He's already in heaven. And and it's talking about present tense, the life He lives right now. We ride back to heaven, heaven, heaven on earth, as He is. Not as He was. (laughs) Not as He will be. Get out of your religious mindset. As He is... So are we in this world. Is He healthy up there? So are we in this world. You don't have to even go through it all. Is He righteous up there? Well, then you're righteous. And you've got all the righteousness you need to come against any wrong that comes against you. Because right will overcome wrong every time. And you've got God's righteousness. Verse 11 Likewise, you also, well, that just confirmed what I just said. You should be living that way also. I'm not making this up. It doesn't fit your religious mindset. I know it. I know it. But you should be living on earth as it is in heaven. Likewise, you also. So, what's the problem, Brother Chris? We're new creations in Christ. Old sinner man's gone. And the curse is gone with him. You're right. But here's the problem. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The old sinner man can't cannot get back in you. But you can get back in Him. There lies the problem. You don't have the old man and new man in you. you got the new man in you. The old man's not coming back. But you can get back in Him. That's why I said reckon. Take into account. Consider yourself dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our problem is thinking wrong. What's the big deal about that? That lets the old man loose in your life again. Your soulless realm is your will, your emotions, your intellect. It's your mind. It's where you make your decisions. And your decision is going to be made 
for God or against God. Yeah. Or you could say your decision is going to be made not for God, then you get the devil. Because yeah. if you don't choose God by default, you get the devil. God's not the default. The devil is. If you don't go after God, I hate to bust your bubble, you got the devil. I ain't going after the devil, but you didn't go after God. That's how it works down here. That's like you arguing with me and saying, I refuse to participate in gravity. It's the default, baby. It's just the default. You can jump up all you want. You're going to get tired. You got a rocket. That's right. You got to take the override. Yeah. You got to put another law into motion called the law of lift, sweetheart. Come on. Come on. That's right. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has already made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen. What law are you running on? on. That's Romans 8 2. I'm not going to go with the default down here. Now, the neat thing about heaven when we finally get there, life. Goodness, God yeah. is the default. Amen. It's the only thing up there. Yeah. You can't even find a different choice up there anymore. Praise Just down God. here you make the choices. For to be carnally minded is death. Romans 8, 6. I just told you, you can let that old man control you again. Because that old man has the carnal mind. He is the carnal old sinner man. When you think that way, what does that carnal mind produce? Thank you. Romans 8, 6. But the last part of that says, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Pop quiz. Would you like death? Or life and, life and peace. I think I'll go with that one. Amen. The Bible's real easy to understand. Yeah. We just need man to screw it all up. <laughs> yeah. Religious organizations to screw it all up. Mm-hmm. You, can, you can be on fire for God and decide you want to go off to cemetery, I mean seminary, Come on. <laughs> and they'll screw you all up. That was planned too. <laughs> you going off to Bible school, find one that I know this is deep, so I'll probably say it twice. Preaches the Bible. <laughs> we got we got to stay with the Bible, okay? If you have cursed thinking, you will get cursed results. Born again, Spirit-filled, new creation, righteousness of God in Christ. Saint, as you sit there, you can be cursed because of how you're thinking. Why is that? Because what you think on, if it's cursed thinking, you're given the curse a source to feed off of. When you were spiritually dead, you were cursed and you had no choice. But now, you're spiritually alive. You have a choice now. Before you got saved, you were slaves to sin and the curse. But now, but now, we're sons and daughters of God. We're masters over sin and its effects. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall hurt you. That applies to any curse coming your way. I don't care if it's a very mild pain. It's still hurting you, isn't it? You don't have to put up with it. you got power over all the power of the enemy. Not, not power over most of his power. It's up to us if we're going to walk as sons of God or slaves of the devil. It's our choice. You're a son of God right now. 1 John 3, 2. Don't take my word for it. 1 John 3, 2 says, Beloved, now we are sons of God. Amen. Now, now don't mean later. No. Okay, I just want to make sure. 
He put all that in there. I think he wants us to have heaven on earth. What do you think? But God told the children of Israel years ago, I call heaven and earth the record this day against you, that I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose, choose life. Deuteronomy 30, 19. He been on his soapbox from the beginning. He wants you to have heaven on earth. He told the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 11, 21, I want you to have days of heaven on earth. They didn't have a clue about what he was talking about back then. Well, look at the world, church world now. They don't have a clue either still. And what was that just 4,000 years ago? Well, we got a clue, amen. amen. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're alive unto God, and we should live just like Jesus. But it's going to take some reckoning, lots of it, to do that. <laughs> you always do that to me. <laughs> to walk in the God kind of life, we must reckon it so. We must consider it so. Which is to take into account what God says. We must, must intentionally... We must choose to set our mind on what God says and not what man says or our carnal flesh says or the old man's mind says. God says we're dead to sin and its effects. Then we are. God says we're alive to Him in Christ. Well, then we are. But it takes some reckoning or you'll walk just like the ungodly. Because you're going to think the way they think. In closing, go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Two verses. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. Paul, inspired by the Holy Ghost, is writing this letter to the church. They're born again. They're spirit-filled. This was the most mature church in Bible day in Ephesians, okay? Verse 17. This I say... Therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles or as the rest of the ungodly walk in the futility, the vanity of their mind. That'd be a carnal mind, wouldn't it? Having their understanding darkened, being, put underline this, put all your little special little things right there with stars, being alienated from the life of God. Confirmed everything I just said. Separated from the life of God. He's talking to believers right there. He's saying, don't get back in their mindset. You open the door to let the old man, the devil, work you over because you're given... The devil, a source to feed on, he's going to curse you again. Wow. Because of their ignorance that's in them, because of the blindness of their mind. God says, don't walk like the ungodly in their carnal mind. If you do, it will alienate you. You will alienate you from the life of God. You've got to stay out of the old man's mind. Because cursed thinking will give the curse a source to feed off of again. And it will produce death in you again. I don't care how much you love God, you'll die young cursed. Because you're thinking carnal. Hey, you, you make it to heaven. But you know what? He has more stuff for you to do down here. If you don't want to listen to me, you'll probably get there quicker too. <laughs> Appreciate that. Amen, Robin. Get out of the carnal mind. The carnal mind is the doorway for the curse to manifest again. The last part of that verse is said, because of the ignorance that is in them. I just put this in right before I got here to church. Because of the ignorance that is in them. You can say as as a born-again believer... New creation? Well, I don't. I don't see it that way. I, I, don't, I don't think. I don't. I don't. I don't agree with that. That ignorance will open the door to be cursed again. Yeah, that's what it says. We're going by Bible, okay? That's it. Hosea four six mm-hmm. says, "My people 
are destroyed because lack of knowledge, because of ignorance, right? Most people stop right there, read the rest. Because they reject my knowledge. Don't reject this message. You'll be cursed over it. Well, that's kind of strong. I'm just, just, I'm the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Take it up with the author. You're a new creation in Christ. You're in charge now. Take charge. 2 Corinthians 10.5, cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's your job by faith and God will grace you to do it. The choice is yours.